three reasons you are not getting your first job as a junior web developer. If you are struggling finding your first job as a web developer, then this video may be of interest to you. Why are you not hearing back from these potential employers? Or maybe you are hearing back, but you're failing the coding challenges, the technical interviews, or maybe you're hearing back from these employers and you're passing the coding assessment, but you're not passing the in-person or the Zoom interview. What's up guys, Clint here. Welcome back to the channel, Code Commerce, and let's answer this first question. Why are you not hearing back from a potential employer? There are a ton of job postings out there on LinkedIn, on Indeed. I know you are seeing them everywhere. Maybe you've applied to some of these jobs. Maybe you have applied to a lot of these jobs, but none of them are getting back to you. Often you're gonna see a hundred applicants just for one position, and that can be really discouraging. Everyone talks about how great the tech industry is and how fast you can get a job, but let me just tell you, it's not going to be easy. There's gonna be a lot of work involved and there's gonna be a fair amount of luck as well. And of course, there's gonna be other factors that play into this as well. Did you just graduate from a coding bootcamp? For example, or maybe you have a four-year computer science degree, or are you a self-taught developer? It can be a little more challenging if you don't have a degree or a certification to back up your knowledge or your skill set. How can a potential employer know that you can actually do what you say you can do? How could the employer ensure that you are the right candidate for the role? So number one, why are you not hearing back from these potential employers. It's because you're not presenting yourself in the best way possible. You need to make yourself marketable to a potential employer. You need a well-written resume and a well-rounded portfolio to present those skills in the best way. Some companies may be getting over a hundred resumes in their email or across their desk and you need to stick out in some way. So let's talk about your resume. First and foremost, make sure that it's well written. If writing isn't your strong suit, then have a friend or a family member help you with this. Have a look at some other tech resumes online and see how people are presenting themselves. In my experience, it reads best when you have a short bio at the top, followed by your skills and some recent projects you've worked on, and then your work experience just below that. The second reason you're not getting hired as a junior web developer is that you are not passing the technical assessments. Technical assessments and technical interviews can vary from employer to employer. I've had all different types of these interviews. You may be writing code on a whiteboard in person or you may just have a conversation with a technical lead over the phone and be asked questions about how you would architect a specific project. Or they may send you a coding assessment from a website such as HackerRank, for example. In order to prepare for these coding interviews and these assessments, there are a lot of really great tools out there. For beginners, if coding challenges are a brand new concept to you, or maybe you're still learning how to code, then I would familiarize yourself with them at least. And the best place to do this, in my opinion, is a website called Edabit. I have a link below, which is an affiliate link, meaning I do get a small commission if you sign up. However, this is the best place I found to familiarize yourself with these coding assessments and start solving them at a basic level. There are other really great sites out there as well. For example, Leak Code, maybe algoexpert.io. But if you are a complete beginner, if this is something that's brand new to you, then I recommend checking out Edabit still. Once you're consistently solving these coding challenges on Edabit, then it'd be a good idea to move up to Leak Code or maybe Algo Go expert. I've said it before, many of these employers will pull these coding challenges and these coding questions directly from these sites. The third reason you're not getting your first job as a junior web developer is that you're not passing your in-person or your Zoom interviews. Why are you not passing these interviews? Maybe you have a great resume lined out detailing all your projects and everything that you've worked on. Maybe you're solving these coding challenges consistently, but you're still not passing the in-person or the Zoom interview. It's expensive to hire a new employee and 30 to 60 minutes to interview somebody is a really short amount of time to determine whether or not you're gonna be a good fit for the role and for the company. But there are a few things you can do as a candidate to make yourself stand out. I'm gonna skip over some of the obvious ones here, such as being well-dressed and being punctual and being polite. So how do you stand out? Number one, show interest in the company. This will go a really long way. A little research about the company and having some well thought out questions targeting that specific company or maybe that specific job role will be very beneficial. So make sure you have done your homework and you have some well thought out questions 
prior to the interview. Number two, be prepared to answer some specific questions related to some of the obstacles you've encountered as a web developer and what you did to overcome these obstacles. They want to know whether or not you can solve problems and what happens, what do you do whenever you encounter a problem? What's your thought process and how do you go about solving that problem? Talk about a project that you have worked on where you were faced with a specific challenge what did you do to address that problem? How did you go about implementing the changes or improvements and what was the outcome of the situation? And number three, avoid trash talking previous employers or previous coworkers. Nobody wants to work with a toxic person and if you're talking about another employer, that's gonna give off some really bad vibes. So with all of that being said, after you like the video and leave me a comment, go look at your resume. Ensure that you are presenting yourself in the best light possible. Make sure you are nailing those coding challenges and prepare yourself for interviews. Be prepared to answer, tell me about some of the challenges you ran into in your last project, your previous company, and how did you overcome those challenges? Or why did you choose to architect the program the way that you did? Put some time and some thought into these questions and you will 100% be better prepared for these interviews. That's all I have for today, guys. Smash the like button, leave me a comment. I love talking with you guys, and I will see you on the next one.